OK, so in the next exercise and more generally, you might sometimes see complex numbers that are written like this. And what you should be thinking when you see this is this is not in the standard modulus argument form. And the reason it's not in that standard modulus argument form is because of this bit right here. It should be in the form with a plus in the middle. It should be r cos theta plus i sine theta. But they love doing these questions where there's a subtract in between. And if there's a subtract in between, we're going to learn about how we can manipulate it so that it is in this form here instead. So I want to talk to you about the graph of cos theta and sine theta and a little bit about their transformations to begin with so that we're going to learn how to do this. The first thing I want to talk about is I'm going to draw on this graph what cos of minus theta looks like. Now, cos of minus theta, the input here has been negated. And when you learn about functions and graphs in pure year one, you will know that to sketch this kind of graph, it is a reflection in the y axis. It's a reflection in this line here. So if I was going to reflect the green graph in that y axis, unsurprisingly, oh my goodness, with that rather wobbly hand, when you reflect it in the y axis, you actually end up with exactly the same graph like this, which is why I've written here that cos theta is equal to cos of minus theta. Now, this is an example, as I've written down here, of an even function, because cos theta is equal to the cos of minus theta. This is it in its function notation, and this is it written with the particular cosine function in mind. So this is what we call an even function. And what I've written down here is that even functions are symmetrical along the y-axis. This doesn't really pop up much in A-level maths um, or further maths, really. But it is something you will use when you go to degree level. And it's just to describe any kind of function which is symmetrical along the y-axis. So we're going to try this same process. I'm actually going to start off now for the sine graph. I'm going to plot sine of minus theta. Now, when you plot sine of minus theta, it is going to reflect in the y-axis like this. So I'm going to reflect this section, first of all, in the y-axis. Now, when I reflect that in the y-axis, it's actually going to come up and then down over here. And now I'm going to reflect this part here in the y-axis as well and we get this shape. So unfortunately, we don't have the same pattern. We don't have that sine theta is the same as sine of minus theta. That is not true. So I'm going to put that line through the equal sign here. But if I add in a negative in front of this, so that I have minus sine of minus theta, this little negative is going to reflect it in the x-axis. Now, I'm going to do this in a different colour. Let's do it in a green. I'm now going to reflect the blue one in the x-axis. So I'm going to reflect this blue line here in the x-axis all the way along here. Ignore the red one, just focus on the blue one. So when I reflect that blue, it's actually going to land right back on top of the original sine graph, which tells me that sine theta is actually the same as minus sine minus theta. To get to that, we did a reflection in the x-axis and we also did one in the y-axis. Now, this is a particular example of a function that is odd. So I've said here, when the function is equal to the function where the input is negated and the overall function is negated, like here, the input is negated and the overall function is negated. That is what an odd function is. We can either think of that as a reflection in the x-axis and in the y-axis in either order, or we can think of this odd function as having rotational symmetry of order two. Rotational symmetry meaning it's kind of rotating about the origin. And order two because it lands on top of itself in two places in its starting place and 180 degrees round. So we're going to try and actually use that knowledge to express this thing that I've got here in the correct modulus argument form. So we're going to use these two facts that I've got here. In fact, I might rewrite one of the facts. So I'm going to happily use, let's go back to a different colour. Let's go back to black for a second. I'm going to happily use the fact that cos theta is the same as cos minus theta. 
I'm going to slightly adapt this one here. Instead of having the minus on this side, it makes sense if I put the minus on this side and keep this one as a positive. So if I write it as minus sine theta equals sine of minus theta, I think I'm now going to be able to use these two facts that I've got here and here to adapt this thing that I've got written. So I am going to say that r cos theta minus i sine theta, I'm going to keep the r where it should be, and this time I'm going to replace the cos theta with cos minus theta, with cos brackets minus theta. And because I have a minus sine theta multiplied by i, a minus sine theta, I'm going to replace it with a plus sine of minus i theta. So it's going to be a plus now, and there's going to be an i sine of minus theta. This is really important, so pause and have a think about this. I replaced this theta with a negative theta. I switched it from a negative to a positive, and I switched the argument from its positive version to its negative version. And I've kind of summarized that in this little box. In other words, negate the argument and negate only the sine term. So it was a negative and it became a positive. So this is not in the correct modulus argument form at the moment. We're going to switch it around so that it is. So obviously the two is going to stay the same. We're going to negate the pi over 6 so it becomes minus pi over 6 because cos of pi over 6 and cos of minus pi over 6 are the same. It is an even function. And I'm now going to replace this with a plus so it's in the correct form. And the argument is also going to be minus pi over 6. Now, things that people have asked me in the past is, well, what's the point of changing this one to minus pi over 6 if it was already positive? This is the only one that's the problem here. Well, the thing that's really important is these arguments need to be the same as each other. Otherwise, it is not in the correct modulus argument form. So they have to be matching like I've got there. And the other thing that's true is they have to have a plus in between. So you can't leave it with that minus there. Once it's in this form, we've got it in the correct modulus argument form. We can tell what its modulus is. We can tell what its argument is. And in fact, we've got a good idea of sketching exactly where it is. It's minus pi over 6. And the line is too long. So I, this is a length of 2. So I can imagine it straight away. OK, let's apply that to just one quick example. And then when this kind of thing pops up in the exercise, you'll know exactly what to do. So first of all, this one here, is it in the correct form? Yes, it is in the correct form. Second one that we've got here, is it in the correct form? No, it is not in the correct form. And the reason it's not in the correct form is because of that minus that we've got there. So let's write this out. We've got 2 cos pi over 15 plus i sine pi over 15. We're going to multiply it by another complex number, which is going to be 3 cos of minus 2 pi over 5. I've negated the angle. I'm now going to change it to a plus. And I'm also going to make sure that this argument has also been negated so that I've got it written like this. Now I've got them in their standard form. I can go straight ahead and just deal with all of the multiplications and additions of the angles. So pretty obviously here, the modulus is going to be 6 because of 2 times 3. And then I'm going to have cos of this one here. Let me get a nicer colour for this. Take the screen. We're going to have the pi over 15 plus the minus 2 pi over 5. So I'm going to do my pi over 15 and I'm going to add on minus 2 pi over 5. In other words, it's going to be a subtract. So let's just quickly do that. I don't like typing pi. It takes me too long. So I'm going to do 1 over 15 minus 2 over 5, if I can type properly, which is minus a third. So it is cos of minus pi over 3 plus i sine of minus pi over 3. Obviously, it will be the same for cos and sine because we're doing the same arguments. So all I need to do now, because they want it in this form, is I need to work out what cos of minus pi over 3 is and what sine of minus pi over 3 is. Now, I could do that on my head in my head, but I'm being incredibly lazy today. So the first one is a half, so we're going to have 6 multiplied by a half, and then sine of that is minus root 3 over 2. So it's minus root 3 over 2i. 
6 times a half is 3, and 6 times minus root 3 over 2 is 3 root 3. So it's 3 minus 3 root 3i. And now you are in a great position to be able to work on exercise 2D. Make sure you look out for any of these that are not in the correct modulus argument form. Good luck with the exercise.